On the afternoon of Thanksgiving, 1962, I decided to start Project Man. And the next day, I had an appointment with the provost, Charlie Towns, and I told him what I had in mind. And I said, well, think about it and let me know. And he said, oh, no, go ahead. So encouraged by that, during the weekend, I wrote a little memorandum, two page. Then on Monday, I received it around MIT, and on Tuesday, I went to see the president, Jay Stratton. And the only question that he had, where are you going to do it? And by that time, I had uh, done some homework and found out that in the new building that was being built in Technology Square, so there was a space. On Thursday, Licklight was supposed to come to MIT for something else, so everybody got together in the president's office, we shook hands, and that was it. Oh, wow. <laughs> exactly <laughs> one week. Uh, there were no computer scientists after all because nobody had a computer science program yet. So everybody was uh, a mathematician, a physicist, an electrical engineer, a dropout. Sure. We had them all. Yeah. But they had skipped the analog age. Every one of them was peculiar and different and unusual and maybe autistic. And, but whatever they wanted to do, they would get done. The project that had to be done was, a, was whatever was the right thing to do because I discovered the right path. You know, and I, I like that. That's a, the, the way science ought to be. There had been an initial surge to try to do something about time sharing. So I decided to initiate a, basically a, a quick hack by creating a time sharing system on, on using the IBM 709, but by just basically using the mechanisms that have been tacked on to the 709 so that the operating system could begin to function as, as a time sharing system. We, we basically took a very quick cut at creating what came to be called uh, the compatible time sharing system. The hackers worked on their computers, but there was all the CTSS and the Multix folks, Corbato and and, uh, and others, the hackers felt like, by golly, we got to be able to do better than they did. Mm -hmm. So uh, Corbato's initial operating system was called CTSS, uh, and so they called theirs ITS. CTSS is Compatible Time Sharing System, and ITS was the Incompatible Time Sharing System. Yeah. And that created a culture of, yes. uh, of, among the hackers, which was really hard to beat. It was wonderful uh, family. Several years afterwards, when Project Mac was really become a laboratory, I tried to change the name. The administration won't let me. <laughs> the laboratory was a, a piece of a department uh, doing research in the established uh, area and computer science was not regarded as an established area. And one of the things we did uh, at, towards the beginning of Project Mac was we decided we had to revise, revamp, and redo the file system. That created a different, new, unknown atmosphere in Project Mac. That is, the computer system became a, a property of the people. And this, this was a, a, a phenomenon that we didn't expect. People tried to create a community. And uh, people started writing programs for other people to use, which was a new thing. We had a big memory, you know, a whole megabyte of RAM. In my pocket is 10,000 times as much RAM as Joel had, as the biggest computer we had then. But we, we were on the, on the leading edge saying, we need that sort of thing, and that became the standard sort of thing. And yeah, I don't think if we were do, weren't doing that, that wouldn't have happened. I, we, knew, we all knew about Moore's Law, and I sort of believed it. Yeah. But I can't for the life of me figure out why I couldn't have anticipated what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't. And uh, I don't know why that was myopia or, or what, but. Uh, you know, it's all so logical when you look backwards, 
and it it seems to, to happen just on schedule. But, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. but why why didn't we predict it? I don't know. Well, I think the kinds of things we big, we did back then have become uh, part of uh, mainstream computer science, and as uh, they become more important, they've become less conspicuous. And people were shocked. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were two things. One was the idea that out of a typewriter you could control a computer. This, this, this is this was a basically unthinkable for many people. And uh, and then the power inherent to the, the thing, what you could do. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it was a, just a different world that people were enchanted.